This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we will continue to work with the report and form for animals. And we edited it last time to use cascading LOVs. In this video, we will add a button and attach a dynamic action with code that will estimate the age of an animal. I also want to do a little bit of application cleanup. I want to delete a couple of pages that are no longer useful. We had a form with a report for the list of values dominant breed, but then we modified that lookup table, added another column, and created another report and form for the most current state of that table. So we need to do some cleanup. And there may be some navigation items that need to be removed or modified. Then we can move some pages over from the development application to the production application. So I'm logged in to the Animal Shelter workspace as one of the developers. I'm going to go into Application Builder and the Development Application, and I'll run that application. Under Animals, I'm going to look at the Report List of Animals. Then I'll go to the form by clicking one of these Edit Pencils. And so now we have, depending on what we select for category, we get an appropriate list of dominant breed. And we did some cleanup by removing the checkboxes and switching them to radio groups for some of the fields this table uses. The other thing I want to do is I want to estimate the age. The age will be based on the estimated date of birth and the current date. So if an animal is less than a year old, it's going to be zero. If it's more than a year old, we'll see the year. We're not going to worry about things such, such as one year and six months. Just a rough estimate. So I'm going to edit this. I'll put the chip number, the date of birth, or the estimated date of birth, and the estimated age on a single line. And I'll also add a button to the right of estimated age. So I will edit this page. And we see the layout here in the middle section. We have chip number and estimated date of birth. Uh, that's fine, other than I think when I looked at that, I want to change that to change the lettering, date of birth. Estimated age selected on the left. I'll come down and say start new row, no. So now we have these three side by side. And I'll save that and run that. Then I'll come back to the page designer. And what I'll do is right click and create a button. For this button, I'm going to have it estimate age. The button name should have no spacing, and you notice how Apex makes assumptions on what to use for the label based on what you name the button. Start new row, no. So we'll save and run that. I should be getting a calendar icon for the date of birth, estimated date of birth. So let me check that. So the issue here may be the width of the column. So for the button, I'm going to say 
column automatic, I'm going to make that 11, 12. Whatever the region space is, it's divided in apex into 12 units. So if I happen to have two regions side by side, each region would have 12 units of measure. So what I have set here is use the last two units for the estimated age. I'll save that. And I think for estimated age, I'll come down and for column, I'll do nine. And then for column span, I'll do one or maybe two. Save and run that. So now it looks like the page item for date of birth is wide enough to give us the icon. I generally don't do too much with the column widths. I often want to allow Apex to automatically make adjustments. But I do want to see this calendar so that I can pick something. So I'll pick the 1st of November and change it from the current year to a year earlier. And I will apply that change. And this is for Ada. I'll go ahead and capitalize her name. And save that. So here's Ada. Come back in. And in the last video, we added a trigger that automatically puts a date in the date modified. So we know this record was last modified on November 10th, 2018. It was created on October 8th, 2018. These are our audit columns. Eventually we will hide these. They're not really necessary for most users of the application, but it does give us a means of tracking changes to records in the primary tables of our database. Okay, so let's get back to estimated age. So the way this formula would work is if it's 2017, November 2017, and it's right now November 2018, then we should get an estimated age of 1. So let's edit this page and select the button and create a dynamic action. And we want to click over here on the left. We want to click Show and change that to Set Value. Under Settings, we're going to use an SQL expression. And I will open the box for typing that in. We're going to use the Extract function from Oracle, where we pull year from a field. In this case, though, the first thing will be the current system date. This sys date is for the current date in the computer system. And we'll take that and subtract from it year from the year from the field from the page item. estimated date, uh, sorry, estimated date of birth. I've got an extra parenthesis there. I'll hit delete. I'll do a validation check. And, oh, I think I actually needed that parenthesis for the extract function. Try that again. And I've got a valid function. So I'll click OK. Notice we still have a warning or message. If we scroll down under Affected Elements, we have to select the affected element, which would be, this would be what receives this calculation result, and that would be the P4 estimated age. We'll save that and execute or run the page. So we are seeing 1 here. If I were to change this to 16, this doesn't update, but I can click Estimate Age 
and it doesn't change. So it took me a little bit looking through the properties to realize that I missed this, items to submit. We've seen in previous videos that you have to submit the value of a page item for it to be in the session and recognized by other page items. So the items to submit would be the estimated date of birth. So I'll save that and I'll run this. So again, I'll come in here and change the year and then I'll estimate the age and it goes to 2. I can change it to 18, 2018, and it'll go to 0. We're just getting an estimate of the year for age. Now I want to do a little cleanup. If I go back to Page Designer and then switch to the application as a whole, Two videos ago, I believe, we modified the lookup table for dominant breed. We added a column. So the pair of pages we see here, breed, LOV, and breed name, are no longer useful to us. We actually have a new report and form based on the updated table. So I want to delete breed, love, and name, but I will first go in and run that page just to make sure that I'm looking at the right page. And this page shows two of the three columns. So I can go back to Page Designer and I can delete that page. While I'm here, let me just confirm in Attributes, this calls page 8. So it's 7 and 8 as a pair that I want to get rid of. So I'll go ahead and delete 7 and then I will select 8. Always a good idea to run it. It's not what we are currently working with. Go back to 8 and delete that. When I run the application, I also have some edits to make to the menu. List of animals takes us to page 2. When we click on something to edit or to add, it goes to page 4. If I come over here to Animal Info LOVs, it goes directly to page 4. I don't actually want access directly to the form. It will always be through the report. So I'm going to remove this menu item. I'll go to my application, to Shared Components, Navigation Menu, And it's this one here, which, which might be numbered differently than what you have in yours if you've been working along with me. I think I removed it previously and put it back in because I didn't show you that in a video. So all I want to do is get rid of that, apply the change, go back to my application, run it. And so now under Animals, I just see the report, and then I quickly added an interactive grid in the previous video, and I'll leave that here. So when I look at the application, I have some things I might want to move over to the production application. For example, I added breeds, that's breed lo breeds, LOV, and breed data. That's pages 80 and 81. I'll make a note of that off to the side so I don't forget that. If I run the application, I have a people master detail and a report employees. The master detail is page 53. I don't think these are over in the production. And employees, I'm looking down here, is page 55. Let's take a look at what we have in the other application. So I come up to Application Builder, go to the Production Application. Actually, there are several things here that I could move over. But again, I need to get rid of Breed Love and Breed Name. These are based on the original lookup table before we modified it. So I will select 9. I can run that to confirm. Go to Edit that page and delete that page. 
go back to the application. Instead of moving some of the pages over from the development application to the production application right now, I'm going to save that for another video. In the next video, we're going to review where we are in terms of the data model and the additional forms and reports that we need. So we'll move pages over to production either in the next video or the one after that, most likely. So see you in the next video.